For number 12, we are given this right triangle, triangle ABC, and we know that the length of AB is equal to 9, the length of BC is equal to 5, and our goal is to find out the length of AC, namely this unknown side. Here we are talking about the sides of a right triangle, therefore we have to use the Pythagorean zero. And let's do a quick review first. As you can see right here, I demonstrate three different ways to draw a right triangle. As long as you see in the picture that the triangle has a little square, which indicates it's a 90 degree angle, then it's going to be a right triangle. And this is how I'd like to demonstrate how we can use Pythagorean theorem. As we can see, all the right triangle, they will always have a longer side. For the first one, we see that the longest side is right here. So let me just color this in red. And this is called the hypotenuse, but I will just label this as C. For the second one, the longest side is going to be right here. This is the hypotenuse of this right triangle, and I'm just going to label that C. And for the third one, this is also a right triangle, because this little square indicates that this triangle has this 90 degree angle. And then we can see that the longest side is going to be right here. This is the hypotenuse of this right triangle, I'm just going to label this as C. The C, the hypotenuse, is the only exists on how you do the labeling. And then, we are going to label the other sides as A and B. Let's finish the labeling for the first one. We can label this side as A or B, doesn't matter. I'm just going to put on A, and I'm just going to label the other side B. For this side of the second right triangle, I can label this as A or B, doesn't matter. But let me just do it with A, and then I can label the other side with B. For the third triangle, let me just put on A right here and B right here. So, this is how we do the labeling. This is just a setup. And now, the Pythagorean theorem says, the connection between A, B, and C is the following. We will have A squared plus B squared. It's always going to be C squared. So this is the equation that we can always set up whenever we are dealing with the sides of a right triangle, just like the question right here. To finish this up, as a good habit when we are using the Pythagorean theorem, we are going to first label the C, namely the hypotenuse, which means the longest side of the right triangle. Here, the longest side is this, AB. So I'm just going to call C it's this side, and we know the value of C will be 9. And then, for the other two sides, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to call this side A, so A is equal to 5, and B will be the side that we're trying to find out. So we don't know the value for B at the moment. After we have done the labeling, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. And then we just need to plug in the values that we know into either A, B, or C. We do know A, A is equal to 5 based on our labeling. So we can write down 5 squared plus B, we don't know because that's the question. So we'll just keep it as B squared and that's equal to C, we also know that, which is 9. So we have 9 squared. And to solve this equation, we will first work out the power. 5 squared, that will give us 25. And B squared, we don't know, so we'll just keep it as plus B squared. And this will be equal to 9 squared, 9 times 9, which is 81. And to solve for B squared, we will have to first minus 25 on both sides. So that of 25 will cancel each other out. And then we'll end up with B squared equals to 81 minus 25. That will give us 56. And then we see that we have B squared is equal to 56. How can we get rid of the square? The answer for that is we will take the square root on both sides. And usually whenever we take square root, we attach a plus minus toward the number. But then here we're talking about geometry, namely the length of the sides. So we just care about the positive value. And then we can cancel this square with a square root, and then we will get b is equal to square root of 56. And now we have a small trouble because, in fact, there's nothing wrong with the procedure, but then square root of 56, it's not one of the answer choices right here. The secret right here is that we can simplify square root of 56, and let's go over it right here. To simplify square root of 56, we have to ask ourselves, what times 12 will give us 56? and one of the numbers should be a perfect square. So what are the perfect square numbers? Let's take a look on the side. We know that square root of 1 is equal to 1, 
By the way, we never use 1 to simplify square root numbers, but this is just a good start for me to put it down. The next one is square root of 4. We know square root of 4 is equal to 2. The next one we know is square root of 9, that will give us 3, and so on. So here is a strategy. We have to ask ourselves, which of this number goes into 56? And once again, we are not looking at 1. Does 4 goes into 56? Yes, it does. 4 goes into 56, 14 times. Therefore, we can break down square root of 56 as square root of 4 times square root of 14. And then we can continue this because we know square root of 4 is 2 and square root of 14. This is going to be just square root of 14 because even though I can break down 14 as 2 times 7, however, 2 is not perfect square, 7 is also not perfect square. This will be it. Finally, we see that b is equal to square root of 56, which that will give us 2 square root of 14. This right here will be the final answer. And that's answer choice E.